world continues to move and nations continue to rise, but there's one particular nation that caught the eyes of many, Malaysia. It seems there's a new rising global star with a quick path to riches, but how is Malaysia transforming into such a rich nation? What secrets lie beneath its ascend? Ready to unravel the mystery? But before we do that, let's first understand Malaysia's standing in history. Malaysia is the fifth largest economy in Southeast Asia and the 66th largest country in the world. Enter Malaysia and you'll find a striking blend of tradition and modernity. Skyscrapers reaching the sky stand alongside ancient temples adorned in colours and the serene rainforests exist along with bustling markets. Malaysia's history is one filled with rich stories of successes and failures, all of which accumulated to bring Malaysia to where it stands today. Its geopolitical location brings it immense advantages, bordering four countries while also occupying important waterways in the world. On top of that, it happens to be located at the crossroads of crucial trade routes, allowing it to become a growing hub for trade and investment. But Malaysia didn't always have its own economic freedom. That freedom came when, in 1963, the state of Malaysia was finally formed. At the time of independence, Malaysia had significant economic advantages over its regional neighbours. Why? Because it had the resources to produce a large chunk of the world's requirements. Then, Malaysia's economic growth began. With the help of the abundant funds received from the exporting industries, Malaysia invested in development and infrastructure, while placing immense importance on education. Malaysia successfully transformed its natural wealth into shared wealth in a diversified economy with competitive manufacturing and services sectors. But how so? And did Malaysia sustain its initial growth? Well, let's take a deeper dive into the economic struggles and boom to get a better understanding. Malaysia's economic strategy began with a series of five-year plans, strategic plans that basically laid down the framework for economic development. Each plan is built on the last one, meticulously crafted. But it wasn't long before problems began to arise. And of course, as history has shown numerous times, at the beginning of a newly independent nation, difficulties were for sure to surface. Economic disparities became stronger and stronger between the rural Malays and the urban Chinese. Tensions were continuously increasing. A common perception was passing through the minds of many Malays that Malays of the Chinese community, despite being less in number, had greater economic dominance. This led to 1969 being quite a challenging year as it saw greater race riots after its elections than ever before, which shook the nation to its core. But the government was smart. They knew they had to set some plan in motion quickly to stop such chaos from repeating. Soon after, the government implemented the new economic policy in the 1970s. And no, it wasn't just about boosting the economy. It was about bringing the nation together and tackling poverty and inequality head on. Then came the 1990s when Malaysia came up with Vision 2020 a visionary guide that saw Malaysia to be fully developed by 2020. The vision didn't just include economic progress, but rather it wanted to transform the nation completely. A stronger society stemming from equality. Malaysia was steadfast in bringing a change. In 2010, it doubled down on its commitment to growth with the National Transformation Programme. It wasn't just another set of plans, but a strategy carefully put together to bring the country into the list of high-income nations. This strategy focused on making the government more efficient, a government that worked for the people, and the benefits of growth were felt by all. Then came another program, the Economic Transformation Program, which focused highly on increasing the gross national income per capita by nearly 45% by 2020. How would they achieve this feat? By diversifying their economy. But to do that, they needed a strong foundation, and that's where infrastructure came in. It wanted connectivity and ease. 
Malaysia began to open up gateways to the world by developing airports, seaports and highways. This paved the way for the nation to become a hub for global trade. As the world embraced technology and digitalization, Malaysia knew that if it wanted to succeed and compete globally, it needed innovation and technology. The Multimedia Super Corridor, a tech haven, became the heart of Malaysia's push into the digital age, drawing companies and talent from around the globe. Fast forward to current times, Malaysia seems to have integrated the threads of technology into its foundation. But even so, difficulties always seem to emerge, so let's look at the tech revolution of Malaysia. So, why is Malaysia getting a sudden economic boost? There's no doubt it has gone through many phases of development and growth, but compared to other Asian economies like that of Singapore or South Korea, which are considered hubs for technology, Malaysia's development hasn't been as constant or at such a trajectory. After Malaysia established semiconductor plants in the 70s and attracted foreign investment, it saw major growth. But because it was a less targeted investment and there was lower research and development, the growth wasn't as rapid. But now it seems the tides are changing and Malaysia is seeing an opening to reach higher ranks. A new phenomenon can be seen spreading across the nation, the tech center boom. Many global tech giants like Google, Microsoft and Nvidia are investing for the sole purpose of creating new data centers across the country. Google even made the announcement of investing $2 billion in Malaysia to establish its first data center and cloud region, indicating the potential the country has. The reason for this lies with the Digital Economy Blueprint Scheme by the Malaysian government. It's a broader plan that dreams of making Malaysia into the Silicon Valley of the East. This provides a perfect opportunity for Malaysia to attract more investment for technological development. Malaysia is very optimistic about this, as it provides the perfect atmosphere for growth and innovation, especially with its goal to raise over $100 billion to majorly uplift its semiconductor chip industry. This goal is set in place as a plan to move forward toward technologically refined processes and create new Malaysian firms. In doing so, Malaysia will automatically move up the value chain. Another reason why Malaysia is becoming a top destination is because it's a fast-growing, export-oriented economy with comparatively lower national income tax, affordable food and transport, and an outstanding healthcare system. So Malaysia offers a higher quality of living the second best in Southeast Asia, while being affordable. Citizens don't have to break the bank to live a good life, attracting many to even migrate to Malaysia. In addition to all these efforts, Malaysia has always prioritized education, emphasizing STEM subjects, which has resulted in one of the highest levels of STEM graduates globally. These graduates make up the perfect pool of skilled workforce that can meet the demands of high-tech firms entering Malaysia. Additionally, when you compare Malaysia's median wage to other major Southeast Asian countries such as Singapore, you'll find Malaysia's wages to be relatively more cost-effective, hence attracting more opportunities from international firms. But without failures, there aren't any successes. One of the challenges that still persists is the struggle to transition Malaysia to a high-income economy, a middle-income trap. From what we can see, Malaysia isn't far away from reaching that point. Investing in research and development can also aid in pushing the nation ahead at an even greater pace of growth. The recent developments and efforts taken by the Malaysian government indicate a brighter future. It shows the direction is on the right path. Its focus on education, innovation and targeted investments is allowing Malaysia to experience rapid growth. But will this phase of growth remain constant? Will it be sustained?